I believe in 12-step abstinence and recovery. I, I believe that you can recover from addiction. The pre-entry program is kind of an introduction, if you like. I think in the old days it used to be called look and see. So it was about the client engaging, coming in, making a decision, is this what they want? Is this the program for me? Do I want to be abstinent? Do I need to be abstinent? Pre-entry will give them some idea about that, especially with their peers. Because it's not about me, what I teach them or we do on the whiteboard. It really, the power is the group. You know, I've did multiple treatments myself before I got, before I finally accepted that abstinence was the way I needed to go. And I was 40 years old at that stage. So I did everything, I tried every other avenue. I won't use this drug, I'll just use this drug, I'll just use on the weekends, if I just had the right girlfriend, if I'm in the right country, if the police left me alone, if the wife stopped nagging me. It wasn't until I started to take some responsibility myself that actually things started to click into place. So yeah, that took a long time. Depressed and and isolated and withdrawn from society, basically. I mean, the old adage that they say in you know, the getting and finding and ways and means to get more, that was my life. My whole waking day was about getting and using and finding ways and means to get more. And if I didn't have it or I wasn't on the mission, I was depressed. Narration is hugely important and we do that from day one. Day one with the new clients. And it's interesting watching the narration grow bigger and get more honest as the weeks tick over. You know that first week they'll be very tentative and just give out a little bit. And that's okay, we just go with that. Then the second week they'll hear some more stories and it gives them permission to tell a bit more and so the process goes. I think for pre-entry they come in feeling pretty hopeless. So if I can hold the hope for them, then, you know, that's a good start. Until they can pick it up and they get a little glimmer of hope themselves. It's kind of abstinence is, you know, it's the only product, if you like, on the shelf that we sell here. If you want controlled drinking or you want to smoke a bit of pot, that's absolutely fine and all power to you. This isn't the program though. So they kind of get that, you know, and those that want that, they'll go away and try that and then they're usually back here sometime or later. Oh, you know, that didn't work for me. From my own experience, I work my program hardest when my ass is on fire. Not when everything's good. My program kind of just drops off to the side when my life's great. But when it's not so great, that's when I apply my program. And I think, I don't know, I hear it's like that for most. I wish I could, <laughs> I could apply it just evenly every single day, but I don't. And I really normalise that with my clients too, because they go, oh, am I doing my program right? Yes, you are. Are you making mistakes? Mm-hmm. And you're doing it right. And what they think about God in pre-entry will be different from what they think about it in IOP or what they think about it in continuing care. So it's just this process. So we don't, you know, there's no... I do tell them this is not a religious program, it's a spiritual program, and God is whatever it is to you, and it's going to be okay as long as it's loving and wants you to be clean and sober. Um, the first two years can be a real roller coaster. So I do tell my clients to buckle their seat belts on because you're in for the ride of your life. And if you think it's going to be boring, think again. Because it's going to be thrilling and it's going to be hard work. So you'll, get, you'll experience a full range of emotion. But you don't have to use. And it's a great feeling to see someone come in that first week where you, they're just messy. 
and they're tearful and they're looking at the ground, they can't hardly open their mouth, to that fourth or fifth week where they're shining and they're going, okay, give it to me, I want more. When I finally accepted through my process and the treatments, when I finally, the cogs clicked and it was about abstinence from everything and it was a giving up of the fight, it was just this immense relief. It was like the fight's over, the war is done, you know, and it was like I'd lost the war, but I kind of won the battle. That's how it felt, and I felt free for the first time in my life.